my name's Twinkle. We're here in Golden, Colorado. I'm here to show you what I take in my pack on a normal trip. My typical trips the last few years have involved climbing mountains and backpacking far miles into the wilderness. So I've got kind of a mix of my through hiking kit and the technical gear that I bring. So starting off, I clip my helmet on the outside because I just don't have the room inside to fit it and that works just fine. Now when I pack my bag, I always think of what I'm going to take out first, what I may need throughout the day, and also think a little bit about weight. So at the top of my pack, I usually have my food. I usually take it in a grocery bag, especially if you're through hiking, you get grocery bags a lot as you go. They're super lightweight, keeps your food all together, keeps water out. It's just easy and replaceable. You get it anyhow. Next thing in my bag is my rope. Um, partially because it's heavy. Um, it's the heaviest single item I have in my bag. This rope here is just a 30 meter real thin rope. Typically you'd use it when you're mountaineering if you're rappelling or you want to set up just a nice safety net if you're on a cliff, if you're not feeling comfortable, whatnot. Again, just a, something small. Next up I have my shelter. This is a Gossamer Gear 1 with the stakes. I always use trekking poles, um, I'm just kind of, I like them for my knees on long days, it helps a ton on my knees and takes some of the pressure off your feet as well. And also it doubles up with the one to set it up. So there's no poles involved with your tent, there's no awkward poles in your backpack you're trying to fit in. That's really nice. Um, the one is, has been my go-to lately for my single trips when I'm going out or if I'm going out with my buddies to climb in the mountains. This has been my go-to. I've actually recently used it with my wife as well. And in a pinch, if you're just out for a night, you can fit two small people in there. And luckily, Grace and I are pretty small and we can fit in the one together, which is awesome. So another reason I keep that towards the top is for weather. So if you're if you're in a drizzle, if you're in rain and you're trying to set up for the night, you don't want to have to rifle through everything to get your tent at the very bottom and all your stuff's getting wet in that time. I kind of want my tent at the top so I can set it up real easily and everything's dry in my bag while I'm setting up my tent and I can get everything under the tent nice and easily. So the next items I have are my rain gear. Um, again, you may want this throughout the day, so I like having it towards the top where I can get it easily. Um, I used to be against taking rain pants, but the last few years in Colorado, a lot of my trips have been off trail and I'm pushing through weeds and in the morning if they're wet or frosty, that is super cold. So rain pants have been awesome the last few years and I'll probably take them on my next through hike too. After that, I have the dry sack, the Gossamer Gear dry sack in the bag. So everything that I want to keep dry and that I don't think I'll likely use during the day, I'll keep in here. Um, this is just a simple roll and it, it's reusable. A lot of people use garbage bags as well, but I, I like this idea better because you don't have to use so many garbage bags, it's a little more sustainable. Um, in here I'll keep anything that's down, even if I think I want the down throughout the day, just to keep it dry. If down gets wet, it's useless, so I always have it in the dry sack. Um, a wind shirt, this kind of doubles up. It, you could take a wind shirt and a raincoat together or just take one or the other depending on the weather. Um, but weight for warmth ratio is really high on the wind coat. It, I mean, it weighs, I think, just an ounce and it'll keep you really warm if you're moving by itself. So that's good. Um, again, my last few trips, uh, have involved climbing some mountains where we'll be rappelling off or we'll want to rope up on the way up. I take just a few slings. Um, I take a harness. The harness I have is the Black Diamond Coulard. It's not very comfortable because it's ultralight. I think it weighs about three or four ounces. Um, it's safe to rappel on, but you don't want to take a big fall. Um, if you take a big fall, it's going to hurt. Um, and again, you're not going to want to be hanging in this harness very long because it's not the most comfortable. So if you're just doing a few quick repels, it's great. After that, I have my sleeping system. Um, I take the 
um, the air beam torso length. Uh, this, this is my sleeping pad. It goes from about my butt to my neck and just gives me a little like inch or two off the ground, a little bit of warmth, not much. Um, and actually what doubles up is on the back side of the Kumo here, you can see the sleeve. I use the eighth inch um, sit light pad. So I put this under myself. I'll put the torso length pad under and if I have extra clothes or my raincoats and stuff, I'll put that beneath my feet. That adds a little bit of warmth as well. Um, it's nice that this doubles up as a frame for the pack because this is a frameless pack and that helps a lot. And then the last thing I have in here is just a pair of liner gloves, hat. I use that mostly for sleeping, maybe for hiking out in the morning if it's real cold. And then in here is my quilt, which is a little tough to get out right now. Um, I've been really digging the Katabatic gear. This is a um, 15 degree quilt. Um, as you can see, here's the dry sack that everything was in, inside of the backpack. Really nice, really light, um, seam sealed and everything, so nothing's getting in there. So this is a down, I think it's an 850 fill, 15 degrees, keeps me warm up in Colorado in the summer. Um, you'd be surprised in the summer just how cold it gets up there, so having 15 degree really helps me. I'm a cold sleeper too, so. And then lastly, I have in the top pack, there's a little zipper on the over the top. I have my ditty bag. In here I just have, you know, toothbrush, toothpaste, tenacious tape for fixing gear, flashlight, and a little tiny Swiss Army knife. These all weigh practically nothing but essential out on the trail, all of them. And then for filtering water, I bring the platypus soft plastic with the Sawyer Squeeze. Um, the soft plastic works really well because it doesn't suck back on the Sawyer squeeze and that those white rings will fall out or break if you got a smart water bottle or something so this is how I filter my water. Um, the two water bottles I take are typically I, I like to take a fatter one, a wider one, and then a taller skinny one. Um, the taller skinny one's easier to get in and out of my pack so that's what I'll use drinking but having two different sizes allows you to pull water from sources you may not be able to with this sometimes you get a long one and you just can't get from the source because it's all awkward trying to get in there with it so having two different sizes I found is very nice um, then my bathroom kit I have a trowel toilet paper wet wipes and uh, Vagisil for chafing which <laughs> it's kind of weird but it actually helps a lot if you're chafing between your legs a lot of times on through hikes put some Vagisil on there and overnight it's like oh it's gone so that's actually fantastic um, I take a, an inReach Explorer only if I think I'm doing something that's semi-dangerous. Um, if I'm with buddies and one of us could take a fall or if I'm on a remote route where if something happens you're in trouble, I'm going to take the inReach. It's got the SOS, can get you out of something. If I'm on something like the Pacific Crest Trail or Appalachian Trail, Colorado Trail, I'm not going to take the inReach. I'm not too worried. You're close to town. So that's situational. Um, and then lastly, as you notice, I don't have a stove, I, so I don't, I'm not cooking anything. I'm eating bars, I'm hydrating things, so I'll just take a jar of peanut butter and either has peanut butter in it or not. If it's empty, I'm going to soak ramen noodles, whatever, cold soak in there. And Yeah, that's, that's about everything I'll take for, you know, four, five, six day trip in the mountains if I'm through hiking. You can get rid of all of the climbing gear and that's my backpacking kit.